Welcome back. You're still watching The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. And now to our first major conversation of the program this morning. Really sad news as residents of Lagos State were again thrown into mourning following the news of yet another building collapse on Saturday afternoon in the suburb of Yaba. It took the combined team of officials of Nigeria's National Emergency Management Agency, the Lagos State Emergency Management Agency, the Nigeria Police Force, and the Fire Service about 24 hours to get to the bottom of the rubble of a three-story three building and on Sunday evening a, a body of a student on industrial training was recovered uh, from that rubble raising the death toll to five. Zonal coordinator southwest of the National Emergency Management Agency Mr. Ibrahim Farin Loye confirmed the development in newsmen uh, just as a rescue and recovery operation was about to be concluded, we're told, uh, having rescued two persons and recovered four bodies, relatives of the IT student uh, simply identified as Damola had informed the emergency rescue team that their son uh, reported to duty the day the building collapsed and was yet to be found. Farin Loye said the mother of uh, Damola fainted when one of his relatives identified the body to be his. Now, this sad and unfortunate incident comes three months after the collapse of a high-rise block of luxury flats under construction at the Koyi area of Lagos on the 1st of November 2021, which claimed the lives of 46 persons, and of which a coroner's inquest is ongoing. Well, joining us uh, now to analyze this and look at this unfortunate development is um, architect David Maje Kodumu. He is the uh, chairman of the Nigerian Institute of Architects Lagos State Chapter. I'm glad to have you on the program, despite the unfortunate circumstances. Thank you very much for your time. Good morning. Good Thank morning. you very much for having me. Uh, uh, it's, it's yet another unfortunate one. Um, uh, why does Lagos State experience um, recurring incidents of building collapse? Yeah, thank you very much. Um, though we've been advocating, when we say we've been advocating, uh, quite a number of the professionals in the built environment have been advocating for the right thing to be done. Unfortunately, this is another one. Now, you made mention of the one that happened at Gerald Road in November. Now, what are we waiting for? Is almost how many months ago? Two months, three months ago? A coroner was set up, an investigative panel was set up, headed by, you know, a renowned uh, professional in the built industry. Where's the result? Where's the white paper? I can personally speak, I mean, for myself, I've been involved in so many uh, reports, you know, making a submission on building collapse, you know, as far back as almost two decades. But up to today, no white paper. So what are we talking about? Now someone was calling me last night and said, yes, oh, we need to make an, uh, a statement. How many times have we made statement? How many times have the government hacked on the, on the statement? Now, um, I was at the site not more than 30 minutes when the thing happened because my office was just less than a kilometer away from it. I was there from about, was it four o'clock till about eight o'clock in the night. Yesterday, I was there too. Now, I ask myself a question. What is happening? Who is to be blamed? Now, we have to wait for the investigation to be done. Many investigation has been done on many building collapse. And today, what's the result? Mm. We don't have a white paper on this. We don't have any publication to say this is one is brought to book or this is the cause of it. So, um, but you looking at it, yes, we know that uh, an investigation will be conducted, uh, but as an architect, what would you say would probably be the cost of this collapsed building, especially the recent one that happened in Yaba? Yes. Now, um, being at the site, I could see, you know, some st structural defect. And the hollow block waffle slab was used and then the reinforcement in between the waffle slab is less. I mean, you could see that is seen. You know, it's not the matter of talking. Now, and if you see the way the building has collapsed as well, maybe there's something wrong until when the investigation is done. I mean, mainly looking at it is a structural defect. 
And then looking around, or even people talking and saying, oh, there are about 11 buildings or 10 buildings around this area that looks like this. You know, and uh, also, even at the site, you hear, oh, yes, we saw this, uh, the deflection in the slab. Why don't you talk? Maybe they talk. But why hasn't the government acted on this? Yes, it was also said the government, uh, sorry, the building was sealed. Why was the building sealed? Is it for structural defect? I think it's high time we're in the world of Sorosuke. Yes, let's know why the building was sealed. And then why does the contractor or the developer you know, went back to continue the building when the building has been sealed? So that's a question to be asked. Two, also um, looking at the system as well, um, I don't think the government has enough manpower or the resources. Now, I've walked abroad and we see the way it's practiced. You find out that, okay, they go to seal a building for reason, maybe structural defect. There has to be a follow-up. We've advocated to the government to outsource this. There's so many experienced professionals in the built industry most especially in Lagos, because if you were to talk about the number of architects in Nigeria, majority of them are in Lagos. If you were to talk of number of engineers in Nigeria, Lagos has the highest in all the professionals in the built environment. But at the same time, I believe the government still needs to do more. You know, the last time when the uh, one of uh, Gerald Hood happened, I was on the hair with so many uh, TV house, we're advocating for the National Building Code. 1986, it was done by the professional bodies. 2006 was when it was signed. That's 20 years after. As I'm talking to you now, the enabling law is not out. What does the building, National Building Code say? The minimal requirement in terms of materials, in terms of labor to use, in terms of the quality. Now, who is monitoring this? So you're saying that there's no law right now governing, you know... The uh, enabling law for the National Building Code has not been done. Now, you're talking of Yaba. Now, when you domesticate the National Building Code, then the likes of regions or states will have, when it's domesticated, will have, you know, their building regulation. In England, when you want to do any development, after getting your uh, planning permit, you apply for your building approval, and you find the government monitoring the building or the site every week, if not every week, every two weeks, because there are stages that you have to get certification for. Yes, we have the building control agency in Lagos. They started. Are you with me? Because in this world, we are all, everything is digitalized now, and you have stages. But where is dig digitalized? You can always click on your computer and find the present situation report. And I can authoritatively tell you that at least uh, the NIA has been advocating for even e-submission. I, for one, have been in the team of, I can mention almost about three or four commissioners in Lagos State, you know, and e-submission, why haven't we got it today? And all what we're saying is just on your palm. You can find out the situation report. Like this particular building, you will have put it on that apps. You know who the architect, who the engineer is, and put it to the government. And with the app or whatever, they will act immediately on it. So my take on this one, investigation will be done. But seeing it, you know that there's a structural defect. But at the same time, I think the government, I'm sorry, you know, it's the same thing we say every day. Hmm. Uh, yeah. uh, uh, architect, if, if this building was, was sealed off you yes. know, by, by the authorities, mm -hmm. I don't know which of the authorities it was because, you know, these days everybody wants to seal something off. You know, it could be local government. I don't know if it was done by the Lagos State um, uh, Building Control Authority. Um, how, how are people, human beings, able to access a building that has been sealed off um, for work, for right. other activities? Uh, thank you very much. It differs. On some building sites, you have the hoarding. 
And the moment either, you see, one thing is when the said is sold of all, we know about sold of all. What is visible to us is that red, red mark. <laughs> Do you understand? Okay. And in some cases, you find where there's a hoarding or there's a gate, a chain, a padlock is, you know. So if you break it, that means you've committed a crime. But a place where you don't have much hoarding, or you don't have any hoarding on site, and you mark, and it's still accessible, yes? You know. Is it maybe also down to the abuse of this, this um, uh, red mark, you know? The red mark has become a sign, you know, some signifier of, you know, me, you know tra um, translate it to me, you know, come and see us, uh, settle us, you know? Mm. So, so people would say, well, let's just continue, we'll settle them later. You know, and, and it happens across the country. You know, local governments or state um, building agencies will just go and just mark X, and all they want is money. So people, you know, take that as, okay, we'll settle them later. Let's just continue what we're doing, you know. Because the genuineness and the power behind that X, that red mark, has, it's, it's, lost, it's lost its value, it's bite. Yeah, even the rumors has it that the house was marked twice. Thank you. If the house has been marked twice, I mean, if, for the reason of structural defect, that it was marked, fine. Immediately within 24 hours or 48 hours, get your equipment in and then break it. When you know the, li the uh, people's lives are in danger. Now, if it's been marked twice, now like you said, the corruption side is there, there's an attitudinal problem, man no man, you know, whether you want to avoid or you want to settle or you want to make sure, I mean, you meet up with the requirement. I mean, before it was sealed up, are you with me? There must have been a contravention notice. After the contravention notice, there must have been a stop work notice. After the stop work notice, maybe a demolition notice. Are you with me? And even where there is no demolition notice, or I mean, we had it now that is been marked twice. Why was he marked twice? That question needs to be answered. You know, and if he's marked either for not meeting the requirement, I mean maybe the approval requirement, let's know. If he's marked for structural defect, please let's know. And then if it's that, the government have the power, you know, to, to take up the site with immediate effect. Because okay. people's lives are, on da are in danger. And to look to at the result the of it. Yes. Okay. All right. Because that's where the demolition notice comes in. Why, why don't we have, is, is it impossible to, to have states, you know, uh, create or enact their own building codes? Definitely. You know, um, you see, um, when you talk about development control, now we have three tiers of it. You have the federal government, the state, and the local. But as you know, the state is in charge of the development control in their state. Is it Lagos, by law or yes, just? Yes, by law. Okay. Now, Lagos State took the bull by the horn and is still the only state today that reviewed their development control law, of which I was a party to the policy making to review this law, okay. which was reviewed in 2010, though the work started from 2008. As I'm speaking to you today, at least they have the latest one of 2019. And ideally, development control laws supposed to be reviewed, if not every four years, at least, if not every two years, maybe every four years, because you update with the system, with the technology. Yes, Lagos State has done well. I mean, the development control law that we use in Lagos State today is dated back to 2019, whereas other states are still using the one of the 1980s. Some don't even have. <laughs> no, they do have. Oh, really? Yes. Okay, because I mean, uh, your colleagues in River State um, would, would say they don't have a building code or nothing. Yes, yeah, you know, um, yes, fine, I can say the National Building Code exists among the professionals in the built industry, but uh, like I said, there is no enabling law. So where there's no enabling or that means it doesn't exist. But states can go ahead and do what Lagos State is That's doing. what we're advocating with the Lagos State now. I mean, if they've taken the bull by the horn to review their development control, you don't need to wait for the national. I mean, we're talking of the enabling law. Who makes the enabling law? It's the National Assembly. What, what, what's the oh. benefit and the, 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 the purpose of this building control law in Lagos State? Now, the benefit, it clearly states, like I said, the minimal requirement the minimum 
requirement for the materials to be used, for the labor to be used, the quantity, and then you'll be able to monitor. And for all other elements in the building, now you go into some houses, you're climbing the stairs. The moment you climb one that with a low rise, the next you see another one. I mean, this is a part of the building regulation. It clearly states, I mean, we're coming into this studio now. We don't know whether the walls are fire rated. You don't know whether the doors are fire rated. All this is well spelt out. So if we have all these things, why are we still seeing these, these tragedies? We won't see these tragedies, my, my, my dear brother, because it's clearly stated for this column or for this lab to meet this requirement, yeah. certain number of, I mean, the materials must have been tested. Yeah. Are you with me? Okay. And make sure that they meet the requirement. Okay, let me just give you a good example. You want to cast a slab. The moment you mix the concrete, you put up just about one uh, cube uh, boxes where you have four of the concrete you've mixed, you know, and you send it to the laboratory. The first of the four is tested seven days. The second is tested 14 days. The third is tested 21 days. And the fourth one is tested at the 28 days. And that will have tell, told you the strength of the concrete you are using. And then you get a certificate. The same thing with your iron rod. Now, they will have tested the iron rod, the quality of it, the strength, and to know that, oh, this is not going to corrode easily, because even the sand you are using need to be tested. Mm -hmm. The cement you are using need to be tested, because some of this sand sometimes is taken from the lagoon or from the ocean, and it has a high salt content. So, so it brings me now to the question, because some people say that uh, there are procedures that need to be met before work, is, uh, work actually commences on site. And some yes. say you need the soil testing, uh, architectural design mechanical design, electronical design, and structural design. Yes. And uh, some people say that for most of the buildings that have collapsed in Lagos and amongst others, of course we're staying in Lagos now, is that yeah. you know the, uh, the developers ignored the first, which is actually the soil texture. But do you think that that's the case right now with the Yaba? Um, uh, you know, do you think that that's the case with the collapsed building at Yaba? And is that usually the case if one of these procedures has been ignored. Does it mean that you know, everything will go down? Uh, some people who argue for this say that usually if the first is ignored, then you, you can have you know, it being faulted at all levels. Yes. Now, um, let me go back to the National Building Code. The National Building Code is actually into four parts. Pre-design, design, construction, and post-construction. What needs to be done at the pre-design? First and foremost, you need to do a soil test to know the strength of the soil that you want to build on. That would determine what type of foundation you have to put. Now, that area you might think is a solid ground, but there's a lot of a swampy area along. When you're going to University of Lagos, both left and right is more of a swampy area. You're fine, there's been a lot of development. Now, if the soil test has been done, Maybe you won't have had, I mean, I can't say whether it's done or not. Mm. Now, it's from the soil test, apart from the architect doing the design, it sits with the structural engineer to determine what type of foundation and then what goes on after. That is, the substructure, which is the foundation, then before the superstructure, which is the, what you see, you know, the, uh, the columns, you know, the walls, how many floors is going. And is that soil test and the foundation you put in that would determine how many floors. Not only that, reason why we're talking of the code and the building regs, now you liaise with the authority. The authority will tell you, yes, what is the density provided for this area? Now, is it one family unit or four family unit? I mean, looking at that structure, looks like six family unit. Which where there's parking space on the ground floor and six flats. So that tells you six family unit. Now, is that what is stated in the government regulation for the area? Then, after doing all that, you now submit to the authority, the fiscal planning authority, where the assessment will be done. And after the assessment is done, even where you have maybe some alterations to make, you go back and do the alterations. 
thereafter, you get the planning uh, permit, and then you get the building approval. Now, when I said the state government has took the bull by, I'm talking of the less state, legal state government has taken the bull by the own. It was from this law that the development control were divided into three parts, where we have the Lagos State Fiscal Planning Authority, which handles the planning permit. And you have the Lagos State Building Control Agency, which deals with the building approval. Then you have the Lagos State Urban Renewal Agency, who looks at the whole master area, plan. master plan, to know whether this area needs to be regenerated or, you know. So the things are in place, but negligence, most especially by who we have as so-called developers who try to cut corner. Pound foolish, penny wise. But I mean, if you have, you have these laws. Um, laws are made to be broken, <laughs> you know. Um, we, can, we can't say because we have um, criminals roaming the streets breaking the law, we allow them, you know, to break the law. Um, there's, a, there's, a, there's a place of, of, of uh, oversight or regulation or the regulator. And um, so with a beautiful setup of the legal state, you know, building, you know, development or control law, setting up these three aspects of, you know, the, you know, the, um, the urban, you know, aspect, the building control aspect and the, the planning. Why are we still having people, you know, being negligent or cutting corners and we have buildings collapsing like we had in Ikoi, we have in Yaba, in Lagos State. I, I've been out on Lagos State before now and one thing I would always notice is that we keep hearing stories of collapsed buildings in Lagos State. Yeah, um, thank you very much. There are a lot of factors or a lot of things to be done. Number one is the awareness. Now when we talk of awareness, you need to come down to the grassroots. Like I advocate for one thing, you know, I mean, I'm of Yoruba, uh, tribe, you know, even regardless of being mixed race. Now, you want to talk to a bricklayer or a welder. He doesn't understand English, but you look at the four um, stages I mentioned in, in the National Building Code. We said pre-design, design, construction, after construction. Now, what does pre-design mean? You can set the foundation before you start. Which in Yoruba you can say ikwile. I don't know, I've, I've tried to translate it to all the four languages, but when you make the carpenter everyone aware of this, the awareness, that's number one. Number two, has the government got the resources? You know, where it needs to be outsourced, outsource it. Number three, attitudinal problem. Resources to, to monitor? To monitor, yes, that is to the professional bodies in the built environment. Now, the attitudinal problem of our people, which you mentioned. Now, we talked of many investigation has been done on building collapse. If we are to date back to 19, I mean, the one I've been involved with, maybe from 1998, or sorry, uh, 2008 or 2003, are you with me? We have over 20. Now, have you brought out any white paper on this? And when you bring out the white paper, you publish it, Abby, and bring the, the people involved to books, whether they are dead or they are alive. When you start bringing people to books or you know, punishing them for it, others will be, not that, ah, they will let me see who I can see. Do I know the governor or do I know the KBC or do I know one senator? But even that senator or that whoever wants to speak. I'll give you a good example. Uh, the traffic uh, one, Lasma. I mean, I've been caught before. And even where I thought, oh, I know someone, the ticket is done immediately. And you make payment. And, you know, so you can imagine if that can be done on the Lasma side. I don't know the reason why it cannot be done on the other MDAs, other agency. So let's bring the people of the past, or the, you know, to books, penalize them, punish them, so that that will serve as a deterrent. Thank you to others. That's just okay. Okay. So so people are being let off the hook easily. Um, it means government is not being hard, and it's really not living up to its responsibility. It's interesting you talk about uh, um, outsourcing monitoring yeah. of of, of um, building construction in Lagos State and in Nigeria as a whole. Um, because even for the government 
projects, the ones that are in the budget every single year. You know, we see things like budget for monetary. And this budget for monetary is going to a private company. You know, maybe a road is being built, for instance, East West Road. Um, the budget for monitoring this project go, went, went to a private company, you know, mm. that, that, that made sure that everything was in line with what was on paper and all that. So government even outsources monitoring of its own projects to the private sector. So it's, it's strange mm. to hear that, you know, they can't, if not outsource them. Do you think, you think um, uh, that that will be easy to, to push through, to see that being done, that government says we are not big enough to do, uh, to do this, it's too much, let's allow private hands come in. Right, thank you very much. Yes, uh, like what you've said now, apply mainly to the road construction, from my knowledge. Now, a good example is Lagos State. There are over 48,000 construction sites in the entire Lagos State. I'm talking of the Ibile, uh, Ikeja, Badagri, Ekbe, Lagos Island, you know, Ikorodu. and Ikorodu. Yeah. There are over 48,000 construction sites. Now, how many people do we have to monitor 48,000 construction sites? Let's get the record of the statistics out. I don't think they have up to 100 registered or fully architects in the entire Lagos State MDAs. Okay. Talk less of the engineers or talk less of the other professionals. Now, in, um, in the best uh, global practice, even in Singapore, in America, in UK, where you think everything is in place, they still outsource. Now, in one of the countries, they call them accredited checkers. We've made all this recommendation. For years now. For years, you know. We have what they call third party certifier. You know, we have uh, accredited inspectors. Every country has a kind of a nomenclature or whatever they give. And you find out that I might be, I'm an architect. Now, I'm practicing in UK. I might not even touch a drawing board or do any design for some years. All I'm doing, I'm an agent to the government monitoring. So if you are the one that designed and she is the owner now, I don't have anything to do with the two of you, but I act on behalf of the government to monitor. And the, uh, this thing bestowed on me that if I do anything wrong, I'll be jailed for it. So the one important thing is to have that professional indemnity insurance. Now, this is where the insurance uh, company comes in, which they're not friendly at all. Mm. Are you with me? Mm. Because I've been involved in so many projects that you want to get a professional indemnity insurance, you have to go abroad. It's because the insurance the company wants to get a lump sum. One time, actually, uh, the Lagos State chapter is having a, a seminar this month where we're inviting the president of the insurance broker to come and let's talk about this and let's see the way out. Now, because when you look at this uh, collapse in Yaba, definitely, if there's a professional indemnity insurance in place, the structural engineer or the whatever will go, to, at least will have peace because he might have instructed the developer that, sir, this is not right. I mean, we heard about the one in Gerald Road yeah. where the engineer has to pull out so the, there's so many things that need to be put in place. Okay, so, so maybe we'll be begin to talk about some of them. You have talked about the fact that we don't seem to have enabling laws, although the laws exist. Uh, the National Building Code needs to be domesticated. And so do you think that that solves the problem or is it the problem of creating awareness? Because most times with our laws, like we already know, you, f you find the issue of implementation a big deal. So you have the laws. So even if you have uh, the domestication of this National Building Code, code down, what happens with implementation, monitoring and ensuring that people are complying to it. So um, there's a lot of it, but how do we address it? What's the way forward? I mean, we're talking about a sustainable uh, solution at this point. Yes. Um, I gave an example of the LASMA, the, the traffic management in Lagos. I mean, you look at what it was maybe about one and a half decades ago. But when we had BRF and all the other governors or from BRF time, there was enforcement. Now, if we're to have the enabling law, 
the reason why all these are getting away with this is stated where you, you know, so he gets away with murder because he can buy anything, he can do anything, but where you have the regulation in place and they know that this is the penalty. Now, this has dated back to so many years, the laws of Amurabi. He will kill by sword, who surely die by sword. So the moment you are found guilty for putting people's life in danger or you've killed someone, definitely you have to be killed as well. I just give you on a lighter note, how do I, how do, do my son in came to be magic or do me? Are you with me? My great great grandfather has horses and you know, maybe due to the due to the carelessness of one of his servants cleaning the horse, you know. The horse, you know, kicked back and killed one of his daughter. So his friend were now telling him, please forgive him, don't let it pain you. And that's, I can tell you vividly, that's how Majekodumi came in. The laws has been there for years. So if we have this enabling law, and they know that this is a penalty for this, are you with me? Then the enforcement will come in naturally. So, but, but, where, where, interestingly, but, in the, but in the, the in penalties, the, it's not like you know, it's not like we don't know. I mean, we, we begin to cite some now, other issues. Okay, For uh, instance, let's maybe we digress a bit. To say security issues. We have killings that are going on in this country. You look at the northern part of the country, whether they call themselves the bandits or they're just random persons. People are killing, and the criminal code talks about mother killing. It's a crime. But how come, you know, you still have these persons moving around freely? It's not like we don't know what the penalty says about you committing a murder. That's why you have a system. So whatever the case is, be it an aggrievance with one tribe or the other, you have a law, you have a system, you have a government, and that's why things should be addressed. But you don't see people being arrested. How many persons are... I mean, over time, you just find people being emboldened. And so it feels like this is trickling down to every sector, including, you know, the building sector. And that's why we constantly... So even if we say we don't have sufficient laws, you know, to actually guide the activities, but the little that we have, how efficient have we been with it so uh, um, it's, yeah. it's a thank concern. you very much um, unfortunately the co country is in a rot I can say that the country is in a rot because we are the one that voted these politicians and they are there to carry out you know this now you mentioned the bandit we mentioned Boko Haram you mentioned you know um, all these uh, maybe Boku or Igbo I don't know all these fighters and then for one reason or the others, when it has been established, it's proved that yes, this group or this individual, but you know the country where we're in, and the election is coming up again, and they'll switch talkers. Those that they will sell their soul will sell their soul. But we're in it together. The only way we can get out of this is for you and I either to get involved in the politics, but the likes of you and I will not be encouraged. And do you have the money to waste? Because even to be in politics is money. It's expensive. It's expensive. <laughs> and at the end of the day, it's still, I mean, look at the answer thing. I mean, it's been turned around. It's been, you know, all sort of things. But it's very sad so, so where we found ourselves today. But we'll continue to advocate. And it's still left to us. Election is coming. Let's shine our eyes and let's make sure we do the right thing. And you see all the prayer, this prayer that, yes, one day prayer will be answered. But for prayer to be answered, we are the architects of our life. So we need to do the needful. Interesting. Uh, uh, f finally, be before we, we are done, you know, the ongoing Ike Ikoi um, uh, coroner's inquest is, like you said, still ongoing. Um, and um, we have you, you, you winced. I don't know what your, what your thoughts no, are. It's still on, is, it, is it still ongoing for the past three months? I mean, there's yeah. been about two or three different bodies. There's the, uh, the investigation body, I mean, the panel set up by the uh, government. In Abuja? No, even okay. the Lagos State. Lagos State panel. Uh, which they said they were given one month. I believe they are finished over a month ago. How long does the coroner take? Will it take two, three months? I believe they've finished. So it's not that it's ongoing. Because one, one thing is, it's not that it's ongoing. 
a lot of the victims or majority of the victims affected has been buried. So is there any other post-mortem or whatever they want to do? They've done all their tests. To know so, what killed them. So what are we still waiting for? You said to us they're given one month. This is three months after. We haven't had the result. We haven't had the publication. But, but, we but haven't had... Corinne, I, Corinne seems, uh, I think, has submitted his report to the panel uh, uh, in Abuja. And they, they said the engineering uh, deficiencies were responsible for... for but that. is there a view? Have we seen it uh, published in the media, in the paper? Or have we had anything? Or has anyone come up to you or what, like we, 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 have we, just we, have to, we have to go. We have to go. Yes. Um, 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 architect, thank you very much for your time. But in summary, what you're saying is that um, we need to have the political will um, and also the, the vision and ideas to, to come up with a solution because mm. this is too big for government to handle alone. Yeah. The private sector needs to be brought in as, as consultants and empowered to do this on behalf of government yeah. so that they can cover the entire area. Yeah. And of course, people must pay for the crimes they commit in terms of mm. these collapsed buildings. Yeah. Thank you very much. Uh, David Majikunumi is the uh, chairman of the Nigerian Institute of Architects Lagos State Chapter. And uh, that's uh, the much we're going to take on this particular issue and this topic on Plus TV. We'll be monitoring it um, as the days go by on this channel. All right, that's it on the show this morning. If you missed out on any part of the conversation, it's all right to follow us on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. And do subscribe to our YouTube channel at Plus TV Africa and Plus TV Africa Lifestyle. I am Messi Bufo. And I'm Kofi Bartels. Thank you very much for your time. We return tomorrow. Keep watching. Good morning.